What's up guys, Johnny525 here and I'm back with another episode of Road to 100. Uh, this week I have a 64 and 25 Capture gameplay on Hijacked, playing Hardcore Security. Domination. Uh, this was a Alpha. very epic Secure. first round uh, for me and a very average second round. And it's going to really showcase how one individual uh, can't win a game or make a game. Uh, and it's going to show how one individual Enemy can definitely tank a game. Uh, we had one guy on our team that went 4 and 30, couldn't get anything done, couldn't help the team out at all. And uh, during the second round, the opposing team got their act together, uh, performed well, uh, communicated well, and definitely hey, stole this right match here. from us. Uh, this week I want to talk a little bit more uh, about the Xbox One and the connectivity, the not always online, but connect once a day. Uh, right after I put out my video last week, Kotaku uh, released an, an interview, or not an interview, an, an article uh, about a closed door meeting that was had with uh, Xbox One's en engineering manager, Jeff Henshaw. And uh, they talked about the cloud computing system that Xbox One will be encompassing and how that cloud system is allowing developers to make more expansive universes. Uh, they can hold tens of thousands, tens of hundreds of thousands of users without uh, weighing down your Xbox One. And, uh, little snippet from the article they say uh, says uh, game developers are building games that have bigger levels than ever before in fact game developers can now create persistent worlds that encompass tens of hundreds of thousands of players without taxing any individual console and those worlds that they built can be lusher and more vibrant than ever before because the cloud persists and is always computing those worlds can live on in between game sessions. If one player drops out, that world will, will continue on and can experience the effects of time, like wear from weather damage, so that when a player comes back into the universe, it's actually a slightly evolved place in the same way that our real world evolves, a little bit from the time we go to sleep to the time we wake up. Game developers have given us incredibly positive feedback on the crazy different ways that they can use this incredible new, new cloud power resource. So that's kind of interesting. That's that's a little tease of possible future games we can see on the Xbox One. And uh, that's exciting, but I don't know that it's going to sway any of the naysayers. Um, if I was dead set against getting an Xbox One if I was set on getting a PS4. I don't know that an article like that or a statement like that would sway me, but the fact that I've already pretty well made my mind up that I will be getting an Xbox One and not the PS4, I haven't seen anything from the PS4 that makes me go, oh, this is so much better. Um, like I said, I don't care about the connect once a day because I'm always connected anyways. And I don't care about the used game policy um, because they've already come out and said that they're going to have some sort of system set up with certain retailers. Um, I'm sure that GameStop will be one of those retailers and we do here have one nearby so that doesn't concern me at all. Um, and even if they didn't have a used game policy it just forces me to hold on to my games and be smarter about what I buy and budget better and that doesn't bother me either. I would like to uh, have a library of games handy uh, rather than selling them and then a month later going, oh I wish I had that, this DLC looks good or something along that nature. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about is something that I've noticed over the lifespan of the 360 and the PS3 is that there are tens of millions of Xbox users and there's millions of PlayStation users. 
but there is significantly more 360 users out there than there are PlayStation users. And it always seems like when something comes up, the PlayStation fans are much, much more vocal uh, about their indifference or their distaste for the Xbox. And uh, it seems that the Xbox fans just uh, kind of let their purchases speak for themselves. Um, they don't really uh, take to the forums as much or, or voice their arguments or their desire as much as PlayStation fans do. And, and you see that a lot lately. Uh, you see that a lot when uh, every time a new Call of Duty comes out, it's, it's always the PlayStation guys that are uh, complaining. And uh, why don't we get DLC at the same time and, and all this other nonsense. And, uh, I think that that has uh, a lot to do with uh, the negative feedback that we're hearing about the Xbox One. Um, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of uh, journalists and uh, reporters, you know, Kotaku and, and IGN and uh, uh, GameSpot, um, all have articles on on how poorly the Xbox One is performing in the marketplace and that there's not a lot of people that are excited for it. Um, but I, I really do think there are. I think there's a lot of people that, that like me, just don't care about the connect once a day or the always connectivity, and it doesn't bother them, and it's not going to sway them because they are always online anyways. Um, and like I said, most of my friends, if they make a switch from their 360, it's going to be to the Xbox One. I, I don't think I have a lot of friends that are going to drop Xbox and switch over to the PlayStation. Um, it's just too much of a too much of a hassle, and they're they're happy with the system. They're happy with uh, the controller. A lot of a lot of people, myself included, just don't like the PlayStation controller. It's it's not very uh, ergonomical. It's it's awkward and um, it's confusing. You know, I always have a hard time, every time I'm, I'm playing a PlayStation game and I've got a quick time prompt that wants me to press triangle, I forget which button because I'm so used to A, B, X, and Y, and it's just easier to remember A, B, X, and Y than it is to remember uh, X, triangle, circle, square. Um, not to mention a lot of the shooters that I've played on the PlayStation, you're, you're firing and you're, you're aiming down the sights are opposite of the Xbox. You've got, you're, you still got a, a bumper and a, a trigger traditionally, and uh, and they use what would be the bumpers for aiming and triggers. And I know some games you can go in and you can change that, but uh, the triggers don't uh, respond as well as the Xbox triggers do. Um, your finger has a tendency to slip off them. It's just, it's not very fun. It's not, not anything like to do, you know be aiming at a guy and have your finger slip off his trigger and miss and get killed. It's infuriating. So, that's just one of my dislikes for the PlayStation. And I will admit that the PlayStation 4 uh, controller definitely looks a lot better than the past controllers. I definitely, I definitely like the changes that I've seen. But the controller change is not, not something that... Uh, is going to sway me to go play for the other team. So, uh, and back to uh, Xbox One and the, the always connected or the connect once a day. I was talking with a buddy the other day about uh, about the article that I had read and about my thoughts and opinions on, on why you've got the always connect or the cloud computing system. And, and he brought up a very valid point that if you're not gonna go buy a game that you have to be connected to uh, in order to be advised, connect. Um, you're not gonna. You're not. If you if you don't want your Xbox connected, you're not gonna go buy, buy multiplayer only titles. You're not gonna buy these MMOs or these expansive online universes that you have to be connected to because you're not connected. So that kind of makes, in his view, that kind of makes Kotaku's article uh, a moot point. Uh, it just makes it invalid. But nine out of ten games nowadays have some sort of multiplayer or force you to be online in some way. I mean, they've all got title updates. 
Um, you know, if you buy a game that's broken at launch uh, due to a, a save game glitch, then uh, you're going to have to connect. Uh, I, I don't see uh, online, you know, I mean, you can't go buy, you can't go put your disc in, put a disc in the computer and, and download that patch that you could for the 360 launch. I'm not even sure if they offer that anymore. Um, I knew they did at launch, you could always buy the DLC through Xbox on the computer and put it on a disc and put it in your Xbox. I don't do that anymore. Uh, so, that's just uh, some uh, some stuff to mull over and, and chew on. Uh, that's it for me today, guys, and I will uh, have more for you next week. Thanks. Directive failed. Bring it next time.